Hey data geeks my name is Kunal I help you master data science through non linear methods of learning so before we dive in make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you never miss out on any of the awesome tricks to learn data science today we have with us someone who is from the 12th grade he does some open source work he's part of a development community called cleanify and some others too uh, but he's also primarily more focused on this community called devnest it's a free community it aims in providing free bootcamp on python basics web development and much more along with some job assistance so welcome arush to data science with kunal show uh thanks kunal it's it's my pleasure to be on your show so uh in like today's video we'll like uh, make a so we'll make a quick uh, front end for e-commerce e store uh using react and chakra ui so oh, awesome awesome so i'm excited to um, get on to this particular uh, activity so arush before we get into this i wanted to get some details right so you're you're a 12th grader um and how long have you been coding uh so i have okay so i have started coding when i was in uh, 11th uh so in 11th i had a subject called informatics practices so that had basic basic of python and then pandas and numpy a little bit of data science so and i got started with that so uh, but like the huge change in my or like a major shift when i thought like i can pursue it as a, a career also right mm. so that happened in a during an investing investment competition mm -hmm. so we needed to create a scraper using python Mm -hmm. and that run some uh, like regressions and uh, uh, accord, like used a financial model mm -hmm. to sort out and filter out the stocks that are not performing well mm -hmm. so we can focus on the ones that are actually like quantifiable in the uh, like profit ratios wow so, wow so basically uh, so you learned coding and then um, this was like one of your major projects that you did how long did this project run so okay so uh, i had to like uh, learn everything from scratch so <laughs> when i learned uh, pandas and all this so i had to first learn some maths uh, to like make it possible so that wasn't that hard it was mm -hmm. like on like investopedia and all like there is like really nice explanations for these stuff mm -hmm. but like when i started with pandas and all some so Uh, library documentations are in for special for many python packages uh, like the documentation is not that nice mm -hmm. in comparison to the node js ones uh, mm -hmm. built in javascript so i like uh, went on tech with tim and like many other channels mm -hmm. um, i learned multiple uh, like libraries mm -hmm. uh, that we can use to make the same same project so there was pandas data web reader and then there was beautiful soup for web scraping Right. Mm -hmm. So I learned so, this, and finally, which was which was like a good scraper that uh, that works for the financial systems at least. So we took the Yahoo Finance API. So that was that was actually very controversial because like mm -hmm. they like shut down their API for some time, and like there was not accessible to all. Mm -hmm. So it was like hard to find that. But Pandas data read web data reader. Mm -hmm. a library was there so that did the work till then mm -hmm. i don't know if it is st like still maintainable or we mm -hmm. have, we may have to use beautiful soup for that now uh, are there any paid apis for finance markets uh, so yahoo is free i'm i'm guessing yahoo is not actually now free but like mm -hmm. there are many like yeah modis, there's modis, modis. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there are many apis and okay. like uh, trading view is also there okay for like statistics and all yeah mm -hmm. great cool so, so we'll we'll mention all of those uh, names uh, in the description section below guys uh, so thank thanks for that um, and uh, how in speaking of investment uh, you know there is this funny thing that happened um, yeah uh, we say elon musk tweeted one tweeted one thing and then suddenly that stock rose Uh, yeah. how do you account for these things <laughs> it's kind of a reflection of uh, the wall street and the overall investing community right mm. so what happened was uh, we all know that in short selling the in, like uh, risk that you are taking can be unlimited 
Hmm. Because Correct. if if on normal buying selling the risk is a hundred percent, right? If hmm. you can lose a hundred percent of your money, but in hmm. short selling, you are using losing more than how much you have invested, right? And right. Wall Street news knows that, but when like uh, and also like the market manipulation. So people call it market manipulation that people are forcing some uh, people to buy that, uh, and like so. But that was not the case because. to be honest market manipulation is done by one or two parties right hmm. but in this many people are like to buying it together so that's not a market that's a market reaction not a market manipulation correct correct yeah right what they re- what they reacted to tweet <laughs> yeah and like elon musk like also like right now uh, elon musk like uh, invested so much 1.5 billion dollars in bitcoin and mm-hmm. like he he tweeted about dogecoin so that so many people like uh, bitcoin enthusiasts are like dms me like uh, they so okay so i have invested this much it rose like 45% up in like mm-hmm. few days he made like from 1000 uh, to 1000 bucks from mm-hmm. like 12000 bucks like in like straight like 1 to 2 hours right like, yeah yeah it's it's funny but i think so there are there are no uh, shortcuts uh, you'll have to be a very sound and um, disciplined trader yeah. to be able to beat the market um, i don't think so it happens like one off things definitely can happen but uh, you have to be disciplined yeah awesome market so it's like yeah? market is like totally about the human psychology and hmm. more than the finances because hmm. at the end we are on the ones who are like like mm-hmm. the all these algorithms are like reflection of our buying and selling powers right mm-hmm. so if you are mm-hmm. scared the market will be tumbling yeah. accordingly <laughs> yeah absolutely so nice uh, so uh, arush um, you know you've told about like um, your first project uh, so what what sort of uh, inspired you to get uh, into coding like you had so, some did you have some other options or just coding was the option for you Uh, I had many options. So I am a commerce student. Okay, I am not mm. uh, a straight like science student or, or that. So mm. coding was never the first option for me. So, mm-hmm. but like I like enjoyed that. So mm. many people are scared of the terminal, right? Mm. I have seen people like uh, who want to start with coding uh, mm-hmm. and like they even do the basics. But like when they jump on the terminal, they mm. are like all of a sudden they are scared. so mm. for me that scare was not there okay. and i thought it as an opportunity like this has so much scope and mm. i'm not scared of this and i can do it like i don't have to wait it debate for a sunday to be happy mm. i can do this till sunday right right like, right i can do it this 4 am so you found something that that made you happy and you could do it no matter what uh, time yeah. of the day but little by little every day yeah also like before this investment was my main passion mm-hmm. so but the main thing about investment is mm-hmm. i can handle my money mm-hmm. but i cannot handle others money right yeah yeah the, 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 with that 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 uh, it's it's not a good path to go <laughs> yeah okay so we'll we'll probably speak about uh, investments uh, in another call uh, that is another interesting topic we can talk about but today we definitely we are speaking about coding and how we can do front end for an e-commerce but before that just before we go into that you told uh, you have also been part of a lot of uh, communities right so one is uh, cleanify uh, there are several others then you have devnest uh, which you are con- currently most active in so what does your community do right so essentially yeah. for the people that are listening it'll help them you know understand this community better so uh, so devness is like just starting right now so devness is like focusing on like teaching people the basics the, so there is a really a huge skill gap between uh, like fresh gra- graduates and like mm-hmm. pass outs also mm-hmm. uh, like they, those are people are not employable right mm-hmm. straight mm-hmm. out of the company and co- mm-hmm. companies have to like to spend one to two years of training or like at least six months of training to, for them correct right? so what like uh, Sh- shitesh who is the founder a co-founder of the devness so mm-hmm. what and vedansh vaya so what they did was they thought this like 
uh, this should not be done and like also many companies like okay so naming companies is not right but like mm-hmm. many companies have started like doing that uh, you can learn coding and like get 100 crores package mm. and all so <laughs> yeah, yeah. making a lot of there is a link to kids also right now <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, many wolves are coming out right now yeah 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, so like to like curb these bad practices and all so mm-hmm. we are like trying to help people to get to done the actual development part mm-hmm. get to get used to the software development environments mm-hmm. and like get upskill themselves to, to for the like it's always the survival of the fittest right so right, if, right. if the communities like come together and they can uh, mm-hmm. like work on abstractions and like can mm-hmm. work on better projects and like open source uh, communities also like mm-hmm. that it, yeah yeah and plus everybody can uh, share the learnings on how they cracked a job yeah. where are the opportunities and all of that thing right or as individually you are just sitting there uh, not knowing what to do but as a community you you have somebody leading it giving you the opportunities uh, and you know pointing in the right direction that okay let's learn this technology it's coming up you know all of that thing so timing and context and all of that is very important in communities right so uh, now that we got um, idea about your communities and all of that thing uh, let's dive into what we are here to do today that is building a front end to e-commerce right now the reason we are doing this is that hey uh, as data scientists right we often are sitting on the data but to be able to look at that side of where development happens how the forms are created how the products are getting added to a cart right there's a lot of work that goes on in front end not only that but there's a lot of back end work uh, there are queries that you have to hit your tables that have you have to store the data right some things you have to protect uh, so there's a lot of things that happened in terms of capturing the data and e-commerce websites have a wealth of information right so in that context it's advisable that you also understand um how a e-commerce website is built today we are going to see the front end part of it but uh, essentially the back end part also would be very nice to see right now that being said you know this sort of gives you a context of how things are run on a e-commerce and today arush is going to walk us through what goes on very briefly not too much in deep but what goes on behind developing a front end and uh, for me this part is very exciting because those front end small small bits are also analysis right how do you reduce the number of clicks for a user to buy a particular um product or where should you place the cart uh, how do you you know what happens when the uh, user adds a certain things to a cart right there's so many things but today we'll be covering bare basics and you will be able to clearly see how things happen on front end for an e-commerce so over to you arush Oh great! So what we'll be using, we'll be using React for okay. the front end, mm-hmm. uh, combined with Chakra UI. That's a component library for uh, React and JavaScript uh, frameworks. So there are many frameworks like Angular and Vue. Mm-hmm. You can use that over there also. Mm-hmm. So uh, getting started, what we can do is uh, first uh, one good practice that I do is like uh, in the home folder, mm-hmm. I go on. i have made a, a directory called dev so mm-hmm. all my development works is over here so you can see it's like so many things so mm-hmm. we'll make a, a directory for e-commerce app okay if i can spell that right okay so e-commerce app and uh, we'll see into that oh uh, great now we are going to use uh, something called uh, okay and before this uh, we need to make sure that uh, npm is installed right is installed so mm-hmm. node is the engine that will be running the server for react okay so you can check that if you can like uh, install it from their website mm-hmm. or like google it down it's like really easy and you can check that node is installed by run- running this so if you get the version of node then mm-hmm. it is installed and similarly you can do this with npm okay Great. and so we are guys we are using linux so um it is best uh, run on linux so you want to be on linux while you are doing this uh, even if you are 
Windows, uh, you, what you can do is uh, you can install git bash. Mm -hmm. So that gives you access of bash commands on Linux. Absolutely. Oh, on, on, sorry, on Windows. On Windows, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, so what, uh, yeah. So now we create the uh, bare basics of the React app, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so what this is, this is called NPX. So NPX and NPM are different. So NPM is a package manager where as from NPX, we can like uh, get some libraries for, and for like, it does not store it in our, uh, this mm -hmm. uh, local machine. Uh, mm -hmm. NPM stores it in our local machine, but for, mm -hmm. with NPX, we can take use of the like recent, most recent one, mm -hmm. even if it's like uh, updated one second ago. So okay. We can do a create React app. So by the name, it says create React app. So it's a like a template uh, uh, made by uh, Facebook. So React mm -hmm. is also made by Facebook and is like now open source. Mm -hmm. Many contributors are contributing to React. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll call it, we'll make a React app. Okay. Over here. So it will take like, a few seconds or it can take even a few minutes if you're uh, doing it for the first time mm -hmm. because it has to load all the libraries and uh, all the yeah. related uh, functionalities and so now basically um instead of doing everything from scratch uh, you know you already have a base to start off with uh, it's sort of an abstraction right yeah so we can even use like React. React can be used. React is a library, so it's not a framework, right? Mm -hmm. Angular is a framework, but mm -hmm. React is not. React mm -hmm. can be used with, like you're even building a normal index.html, you can use the CDN mm -hmm. and add that and use React. So why we are using React? So we, what React does, mm -hmm. it, it divides the code into components. Mm -hmm. uh, so if like, okay, so, if there is, is like, okay, I'll show it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but, yeah, we'll, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So first we'll open it in uh, code. Uh, mm -hmm. The code editor I am using is uh, VS code. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also like, uh, that's from Microsoft. You can install it directly. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Uh, so Surprisingly, yes. a Microsoft product is working on Linux very smoothly. <laughs> uh, that Because that's open source. Yes, yes. Uh, Power of open source. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the like a uh, uh, project uh, structure. So mm -hmm. node modules will install all these uh, like React and all. So mm -hmm. this is like huge. Mm -hmm. So what we never like import this in Git because mm -hmm. if we do that uh, mm -hmm. or like on GitHub because mm -hmm. if we do that like the packages will like be super huge mm -hmm. and like. It so basically, we, we you use Git ignore to uh, ignore that particular folder. Yeah. A and if you are deploying it, the deployment server will take care of all of these uh, modules uh, when it's deploying it, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, now this is the main uh, like this is the main index.js file. So mm -hmm. all these files that we are going to write, mm -hmm. uh, other JSX and JS files. Mm -hmm. is going to be compiled and like bundled mm -hmm. uh, by webpack into mm -hmm. a common index.js file mm -hmm. and all of that is like stored in the index.html that is public mm -hmm. so over this so there's a root right mm -hmm. where this uh, the entire app will be converted into this root got it okay uh so yeah so this is the main file uh, and we are not like uh, making a PWA. So we can like take out this part and like clear some of the clutter. So we are not also setting up tests because it's a bare basics. So this also we are not doing and logo will change of itself. So I'll just permanently delete it. Then app.css also I'm not, I'm, I'm going to use Chakra. Okay. So not much of CSS. Mm -hmm. uh, we can take out this. Okay, some character. Uh, App.test is not required. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Basically, so, we're just clean, cleaning the things that are not required and just yeah. having what is required. 
Cool. Now we will. Uh, so I'll use the integrate terminal uh, to right because it's all black. I can't see the divider. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So we'll uh, be using npm mm -hmm. install at the chakra. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are all the things I'm using legacy paired devs because like uh, many a times the packages that are using can mm -hmm. conflict with each other. So okay. uh, with this option, uh, you can try with, with, uh, like without this option also. If it works, it it's great. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me currently, like these few packages are conflicting. Okay, so I am going to use this option, and so the what all uh, things are we installing? We are installing Chakra UI React. Okay, so that's Chakra UI for React. Then this emotion that is mm -hmm. used for like fonts and all. Mm -hmm. Then there's a uh, same uh, emotion style. Uh, okay. Then there's frame of motion. Frame of motion is used for transitions and animations. Yep. So basically, that cool effects whenever you're moving from one page to another or scrolling up and down, all of those things. Okay, it will install. So this also will go into the Git ignore, uh, or will this? Uh... So yeah, so all these uh, packages that are going to be installed is in the node module. So we mm -hmm. just have to ignore the node modules. Okay, got it. And and like if you are like uh, taking this from the source code that we will post, mm -hmm. so you, what you can do is uh, the node modules will not be there when you install it on your got local it. machine mm -hmm. or clone it. So you can just run npm. I mm. sorry, npm I and it will install everything. Okay, got it. So all these uh, things are what happens is the or the package or JSON mm -hmm. keeps track of all the dependencies. So see, we mm. all these dependencies. That mm. we, okay, so this is the package lock. Okay, the package or JSON. Yeah. yeah. So these is these are the dependencies that we are using. So mm. what it does, it runs npm install for all of them. Got it. And whichever, uh, you know, the version it is, all of that is also getting captured. Okay. Cool. Uh, now what, uh, after we have done that, so in index.js, we need to uh, like provide a context to the whole app that we are using Chakra. Mm -hmm. So for that, what we can use is import um, Chakra provider. From Chakra to React. Okay, so what uh, is a Chakra provider? So Chakra provider gives a context to the entire app. So we'll mm. wrap it around here. Mm. So Chakra provider and from here to here, go ahead. Cool. Uh, done. So now so the app a, can use it's that easy. Now a, a chakra provider just like that easily integrated yeah. with it. Yeah. So the chakra is like great. It's like catching like a lot of heat right now. Mm -hmm. So, and what we can do is, uh, okay. So we have seen like, we, uh, like we all love dark mode, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what we can do is for both a dark and uh, like a light mode or any kind of theming that you want to do, mm -hmm. what we can do is we can create a theme.js. Mm -hmm. Theme.js. So uh, uh, this is like not really easy. So I'll just copy some code. Yep. Uh, and over here. So mm -hmm. what it is doing, it is uh, like importing the extreme theme from uh, Chakra UI React. Mm -hmm. and providing it in this. So this theme is going to use this color scheme. So Got I it. set some blue color in primary 500. Mm -hmm. So if if we want to do it dark theme, so what mm -hmm. we can do is we can write some logic. So if when it is dark theme, then use mm -hmm. this color. Otherwise, mm -hmm. use this color. OK, got it. So that that's how this uh... You know, the, the theme adaptation comes uh, from a lot of these apps that are coming up now. Whichever mode you are in, uh, it basically adapts to uh, that particular mode. So, and uh, one last thing that we need to do is we are, need to add the theme over here. Okay. Uh, theme equal to theme 
And yeah, and one thing that I like about this is uh, VS Code is it gives auto suggestion and it also automatically imports it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So you don't have to like do much work. Also makes debugging really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, great. So now, um, uh, as a good practice, we are going to create a. Uh, okay, so we'll add a routing to the page first. Okay. Uh, we'll do it by a, a package called npm uh, uh, react router DOM. Okay. So in other frameworks like Next.js, so Next.js is a framework. Okay, sorry. I cannot actually see the shell because yeah. my laptop is covering it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, cool. So, okay. So this is like really mm. like small library. It's used for uh, like routing in React. So one mm -hmm. thing about routing in React is, okay, so first we'll take an example of a non-React app, okay. So suppose, whatever app you're going to use. Suppose we are taking example of YouTube, right? Okay. This is mm -hmm. where the video will be mm -hmm. uh, when it's posted, right? So over here, when mm -hmm. you are trying to watch any of the video, mm -hmm. what it does is it's loading. It's mm -hmm. not like trying to reload, right? Yeah, so that yeah. is what we want. That is called yeah. hot reloading. Okay. So when we will do hot reloading, so mm. if we are like in a normal HTML, when we, we pass a A link, right? Mm -hmm. A href link. So it like uh, the reload button, you can see the animation on the reload button. Correct. So correct. You are, and when we are going back, so mm. it's not caching any of that. So what React does, it tells you to cache that. And mm -hmm. so we can do that with React Router DOM. So Got it makes the user experience really fast. Mm. And uh, you, you want to think about the user more often than anything that you do. Yeah, custom is the king. Yes, yes. Cool. So React Router DOM is installed. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the app.js, we are going to clear this clutter also. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, uh, can we show anything of the app uh, right now? Will it show anything at all? Nothing. It, it mm -hmm. will show nothing. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, now we add something. Okay. So this is, uh, and we need to import these things also. Yeah. So wait. Uh, so this is like a whole, uh, we are adding like, home and cart. So basically if a page name home is there, it will reroute to home or if a page uh, cart is there, it will reroute to the cart page. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then we have to develop these two pages. This is just the routing. Yeah. So uh, we have not even touched these pages till yet. So yeah. what we need to do is now we need to create a pages folder. Mm -hmm. That's a good practice to keep all these like structured. Mm -hmm. So when like our apps goes on, like, like millions of people are using it and we want to like maintain it, mm -hmm. we are able to do that. So in pages, we can make a home.jsx. Mm -hmm. So JSX and JS like in React, like does the same thing. JSX mm -hmm. is like when we are writing HTML in uh, like, mm -hmm. like in this return function, we are returning HTML elements. Right? So mm. this is called J we can uh, use JSX for that. Okay. I just use a dot JSX when I need the, like, um, there are plugins for that. So, mm. okay. So one Chrome extension that I would like, uh, recommend you to all is, um, called, um, ES seven react snippets. Mm. Uh, yeah. So this one, so this okay. is a, a VS code extension that all of you should have, and okay. I'll show you why. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what we can do is we can just say R A F C E, mm -hmm. four word, four or five words of letters, mm -hmm. and what this will do is it will oh. generate our component automatically for us. Nice, sweet. I hate yeah. typing all of these things. <laughs> so yeah, like too much of time is that things as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and um, we might use a flex for our home. I don't know, but. Let's try. Okay. Cool. So what is flex? So in a normal index, uh, when like we used to write normal index.html and CSS, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, we need to like uh, give this a class name and then we need to specify it as like show is a flex box then does all the css so mm. chakra takes out the css part like too much mm. we we can and this why uh, it is important is because we can make the um, like apps responsive mm. uh, in this time only like while we are developing them only so we don't right. need to write media queries for that mm-hmm. got so, it uh let's see what we can add in the home so uh so these are a few properties that we would like we uh it does every time i want to do that okay, okay. sorry ah uh, great so these are the properties and i i guess i have imported this okay and uh, so one thing about the react snippet uh, it also supports the later react versions so in mm-hmm. the new react version we do not have to include the import react from there okay so we can oh. just take that out and no edit will be there mm-hmm. great uh, so in the app just you can see uh, and we need to import the home component over here also i'm mm-hmm. just going to take out cart for right now mm-hmm. because so that we can just test out home yeah so import oh no i guess it's export default so just home not uh, from our pages slash home and one thing uh, good about uh, like when we are uh, like importing js files from react is uh, we don't have to add the dot js over here it right. automatically gets it like oh yeah, yeah bro you are trying to react in support <laughs> js yeah <laughs> this little little cool. things uh, are time savers and uh, often reduce a lot of errors down yeah there. one thing that react like what, one thing that made react so popular is the development experience right mm-hmm. developers love like uh, making apps with react that's mm-hmm. why it's widely used so right. now what we can do is i guess we have like set up some things and we don't have errors right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. so what we can do is we can start the app. so okay. in the package.json mm-hmm. there's a script the script called react script start mm-hmm. so this will start the development server okay so npm start and just wait for few seconds okay so it says starting development server and it will automatically open up our in the, uh, the page page okay so by default it uh, runs on local host 3000 mm-hmm. uh, also in the first load it may take like few seconds but yeah it works really fine so till that we are over here mm. uh it will like when this shows some output we we'll go back to the browser till mm-hmm. then uh, we would like to make a components folder mm-hmm. so as and we all know and the components folder will be for all the components so like a nav bar right mm-hmm. so we don't want to make the nav bar in every page mm-hmm. the nav bar is okay and it says uh i have deleted app.css and in app.js i must have exported imported it right yeah. so this is so when we take this out and we just do catalyst and it also has like hot reloading so mm. you don't have to start the server again every mm. time you do the change it automatically like understands yeah there is some change and it automatically does that yeah so, it's like continuous integration continuous development continuous integration sort of a scenario yeah so yeah and uh, okay so why are we not able to see anything over here so let's see uh in home dot jsx okay so we, we have, have told no we it is actually showing us the component but it is wide so okay. we don't know so we'll make it blue dot 500 so 500 is just a shade of this blue okay so then we okay Mm, so price uh why why this why is it happening let's see mm, yeah so that is happening because we have not given the height mm. 
Mm-hmm. So for now, we'll give it a height of hundred bh. Okay. Oh, sorry, h equal to. Yeah. Should work now. I guess React hates me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it, it is the thing when you go live. Hmm. That that's the uh, thing. I know I, I've written perfectly written code, tested it twice, twice or thrice. When I go live and I'm recording, it has to fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can like totally relate to that. So, okay, so. Let's. Uh, I have like uh, pre-made some components, so we can use them. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can also like uh, when we we'll push it to GitHub, you mm-hmm. guys can also like copy paste some stuff. Because like uh, this was all. This all can be found in the uh, like uh, documentation of Chakra also. Yes. Right? So while development, we don't have, want to waste time on looking on stuff that is already mm-hmm. over there. Yep. It's not so- like we have to give a test. Right. Mm-hmm. When we used to prepare for tests, we need to learn things. But yeah. while development, learning you is need not to, like possible. Yeah, you need to yeah. you need to get stuff that works. You need to have the proper coding uh, alignments. Uh, so better just get get something and then tweak tweak that to your uh, needs. Okay. And yeah, in the app.jsx in slash home, it's working. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So now we'll make a product. Okay. So before that, we need a live nav bar, right? Yeah. So we'll make a nav bar. So I've made it like uh, completely responsive. So yeah. it will be the same on the phone as well as on any other thing. So I made it like four levels of adjustment. Okay. So uh, iPad, mobiles and desktops. Yeah. So first let them make the components. And then over here we make uh, part.jsx. Then paste some things. So this at the end is going to export the navbar. So we just did that. Mm-hmm. So over the app dot js. Okay. So one thing that we need to like uh, see now mm-hmm. is uh, we don't want the navbar to change. Like navbar is on every page, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what we can do is we can exclude it out of the router, mm-hmm. and we can and add have it, it on that page. Okay. So whatever you modify will be. Um, you know, all easily replicated to all the pages. That's the same experience uh, the user gets. Over here, the, uh, we can see there's a, a color-coded like uh, red line. Mm-hmm. So what we need to do is, uh, okay, another trick. Let's use the suggestions once more. Now, okay, so now we have, it. Mm-hmm. now it should not give any error. Okay, it does, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that is because we have not actually installed uh, React icons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so React icons is a li- icon library, mm-hmm. and uh, it gives like all the famous uh, icons. So in React, okay, that we can yeah. So font awesome is there, hero icons is there, many many icons are there. So, okay, and we can uh, define a theme and sort of uh, get get those use those icons also right yeah yeah so we can like totally customize everything in react Mm -hmm. so uh cool so now if we run npm start it should not give any errors but we don't know coding is still coding and we still we are we still fear bugs yeah (laughs) I guess instead of bugs, we should call them lizards. I fear lizards more. 
we should be able to configure those uh, on yeah. each uh, developer's platform whatever they fear the most put that name <laughs> <laughs> so good cool. is starting the developer so it should not give any error mm-hmm. uh, so yeah it was like it should have it shown over here also yeah cool so now we'll have the nav bar mm-hmm. and in the home component now what we want is so what does a com- uh, e-commerce uh, website has it has products right yes so, yes so we need to add some products okay um so we can make a product product uh, .jsx it will have all our products okay so okay not all uh, but the top 10 or something like that hmm uh so cool. so we'll again so what all we'll be importing from chakra ui and uh, react icons is this right so this is the far cart plus icon so mm-hmm. for add to cart basically right correct uh cool and then what we can do is uh, run rfc my favorite command in react <laughs> Good. and we don't use devs anymore because we have chakra so we mm. use box okay how many creative uh, ways can we define the same thing yeah but like it makes it so reactive right right yeah <laughs> we don't have to waste so much time on responsiveness and all correct so i have some few properties for this box so we we'll mm. use them I was part of teams that worked on responsiveness separately, mm. uh, and so this this uh, I'm looking at this uh, type of development after maybe four or five years again, and it's it's leaped so much forward. <laughs> I should yeah. be continuingly following how development uh, uh, progress are made in terms of coding. <laughs> Also, like. many things that like are going on such a huge abstraction level mm-hmm. that after some time like there are no code technologies developing right so yeah. after some times we wouldn't be even like writing any code mm. it will all be like system design have you tried some uh, no code uh, applications like uh, we have bubble.io Uh, I have others. like not tried, and mm. I'm actually scared because like if I pursue this as a career, mm. <laughs> and I don't have any like after like these platforms will come, mm. like there will be huge job losses according to me. There will be new job creation as well, mm-hmm. but there will be a, like certain period of like it will take some time to adapt. it does it does it it doesn't come like right now um, you know uh, it's basically the innovators first right first they will you you'll see that first one or two fully fledged products are getting launched through low code no code and then you know other companies will start daring and trying to move into it then there are that whole bunch of people that actually start move before it becomes a thing uh it takes some time but i i don't know with innovation these days it's like quickly <laughs> happening cool uh and now in okay so th- that was a product okay mm-hmm. so so we uh, we have the nav bar that is on the top yeah, right and, i guess the nav bar should be visible yeah mm-hmm. okay it so, is and okay it's a, it's it it is mm-hmm. and it is not <laughs> so because, we have the nav bar but we don't have anything in it yeah mm. so just actually, the default the, search is there right yeah so in nav bar dot js when i go in nav bar dot jsx the initial setup is like uh, you know you you need to first initially set up everything that works like each of the individual components and then you start begin customizing stuff right like adding stuff to it hmm, hmm. but once you go beyond that setup 
then things become a lot faster yeah but yeah this setup is like necessary stuff which everybody has to just go through it so do you have some strategies in terms of like structuring and there are some best practices that are there in in like so you are telling like you have to put a components or a pages yeah then... so like uh like it's like normalized right what mm-hmm. i i have learned from i have like learned uh, ui design for like mm-hmm. 3 months uh, mm-hmm. before i actually started making website mm-hmm. so what i learned in that phase is Mm-hmm. there's nothing as a good design or bad design mm-hmm. yeah, at least in the user experience point of view mm-hmm. if the user is able to do that thing with a bad design mm-hmm. and it is not not like uh, a good design can be like really nice to see mm-hmm. but at the same time it can be really hard to use yeah, for example okay. discord right mm-hmm. so discord is like a really great feature like software mm-hmm. but the there there is some point of entry barrier to that mm, mm, mm. only like few tech savvy people are uh, there on discord yeah most of them are programmers yeah 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 or In, initially I, i i when i started using discord i felt a little bit odd i don't know what i'm doing actually but then uh, once you get a hang of it then you know okay you you just have to go to the 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 streaming that is going on and then plug in and start uh, you know participating but yeah it, it takes a, a bit of a learning curve to do it okay this view is a lot better so we have code yeah. one side and the app one side so and that is, is why preferred you but, but like i use uh, uh, two monitors so it, i use one for like fully viewing the site and one for fully viewing this code yes Yes, yes. And we can also like uh, close the terminal because we like, we are not actually using it, and it is like taking up our real estate. Mm-hmm. So close it. And yeah. The more the monitors, the the happier coding is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I have figured out the problem. I have not defined primary dot one hundred and all. Mm-hmm. that could be a problem okay mm-hmm. when well, i made it and this should work so let me copy some stuff okay So we'll just define few primary, or what we can do for now is Control F. This is a trick when I don't want to theme right now. So Hard all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the yeah. primary is now blue. Yeah. So the idea was uh, basically if you defined primary color there, uh, you could replace it easily in one place, and uh, uh, it it would be useful later on. But now you're just putting it there uh, so that it's at least active. Mm. Okay, so at least we have something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it will work like this, and yeah. in it works better in like full screen. Okay, so, you have your cart and your home button. Yeah. so something similar to they would be like our logo over here mm-hmm. we can have uh, people can search for the product mm-hmm. people can go on the home page where mm-hmm. the product should be and we are like developing the product container so okay. let's go over here and start working on that so also mm-hmm. okay so when you uh, okay so talking about uh, this responsiveness right so uh, let's go on the product dot jsx so in products okay so products will have all the product 
Mm-hmm. I have I've used like really bad terminology for that, but yeah. forgive me for that. <laughs> uh, so we will use a grid component from React. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ba- ba- basically, this is like product one, product two, product three, product four, yeah. five, six, like that grid defined, de- define, right? And so how much, how many grids will be available here? So five uh, mm-hmm. in like a full desktop view mm-hmm. and one in mobile. Okay. So I like, I people sometimes do two products in mobile. Mm-hmm. So what uh, in mobile, I have noticed in mobile users. Mm-hmm. If there are two products, they will uh, like usually take the one that is closest to their thumb. Mm. So best that is, is to thing. give them one so that they can scroll yeah. at least and then choose accordingly. Because like uh, Reddit got like some huge amount of hate for that. <laughs> so what Reddit did, it like shifted the button uh, of like, oh, sorry, it's not right. <laughs> It's great. Cool. Uh, so Reddit shifted the upward button, mm-hmm. and like, it went. It was very hard. For Red, is a redditors, a redditors being redditors, a redditors, they yeah. went all bizarre. <laughs> okay. So now we have. Okay. So repeat. So after. Okay. So the first one is for mobile. So mm-hmm. it, it does the mobile first, uh, this uh, aspect. And you can uh, define like, so that repeat one and uh, repeat five is de- de- depending on the uh, yeah. device that, that you have. We can also like make four of them. Mm-hmm. So if you want like two on this level, okay, mm-hmm. so on this screen two is enough. Because, mm-hmm. uh, but I have like chosen the two only, so. Uh, sorry for after that. Now we can import uh, take uh, products and mm-hmm. start placing them over here. Mm-hmm. And also for products, uh, the product I have uh, used um, Unsplash, mm-hmm. uh, so it gives a random image for now. Other okay. afterwards we can use um, connected with DB and connected to backend. Yeah, yeah. Habit. This was such a uh, you know this is such a good feature. Like while you're developing, um, you know, at least the base uh, sample, like your Lauren Ipsum co uh, text and uh, default images is such a helper, you know, the, to to test it initially while you're building. Yeah. E- yeah. E- even things like having some rec- records or so- having some orders really helps in terms of seeing uh, the, the corner cases that we typically miss. So especially does- in... Uh- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So especially in uh, your saying? Hmm. So especially in like startups, uh, when they don't have actually that many products, but they want to make it like full. So mm. while building MVPs, they use this, these things a lot. Mm. So is it good to have like a, a, a set of default stuff so that, you know, uh, when you're building a website, you just load those things up and um, you're ready to go. Yeah, that, that's like the most important one, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I, I, what I do is, uh, so for freelancing, okay, so mm-hmm. I have tried freelancing. So in freelancing, mm-hmm. the biggest thing that you can save is time, mm-hmm. both for yourself and for the client. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so instead of like uh, over here, we are like setting it up from scratch. Mm-hmm. But like when we are like uh, doing freelancing, we already know like there are like some common sites, right? Mm-hmm. That people want to build. Like uh, there are like many Shopify clients. Mm-hmm. So you know that uh, these these struct the basic things will be there. There will be a login page. There will be a card. There will be products. All of that thing. They might change the theme uh, or the index page or the home page or how they want to do product placement. But overall, that structure will still be the same. The user comes to a website, he will choose few products to add to the cart and then he'll go and check out. Right? Overall, yeah. those things are still the same. Yeah. The, 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 the biggest part is like customization. Like you you match it to the theme. Um, you, ha- you have some special elements that come on the page and all of that thing. Right? So the biggest 
differentiator of working with any client will be that right yeah and that, that's surely like hmm. you can't skip that point and so typically all these products that are adding uh, that you're adding right now it will get it from one splash but the ideal process is that there will be a db that will define all of this products uniquely and uh, the db will hit that uh, sorry your app will hit that db and get whatever set criteria of products that you, that you uh, have programmed yeah. right yeah and so in 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 react js like where is that place uh, where you place all these queries okay so in react uh, so how can we connect the front end with the back end mm. so that comes in that part so uh, first thing is setting up a proxy mm. so the front end is usually like running separately and the back end is running separately and they are mm. connected using proxy uh, in the development environment okay and in production uh, we don't need to like that that automatically is done by like uh, we we use things like nginx and all for load balancing and setting mm. the proxies over there in production mm. got it so basically there is some proxy settings that we uh, we need to use to connect both yeah. of these components that's fair we'll continue we'll continue and, with the ui yeah cool uh, and in uh, this also uh, we can use something uh, called as redux mm -hmm. or we can use something called as context api so mm -hmm. uh and oh wait uh, okay so i was thinking why the product is not loading because mm -hmm. i have not like <laughs> rendered them over in the uh, home part okay. so in home.jsx yeah so this is what i was afraid of so mm -hmm. product product so cool yeah now it has really it tests our gra grabber <laughs> yeah cool uh, okay, ah, so there we go so i for now i like turn it into the full site mm -hmm. and if you want uh, to know how i got these wobbly effects mm -hmm. on my window so i use linux so it's highly customizable Weekend. And there is uh, when I used to do Linux, uh, Linux when I was uh, uh, in college, we used to have that uh, cube thing, right? Uh, it, I think yeah. it's, a, it's that thing where you can have multiple uh, screens. Yeah, yeah. What's that called? Uh, uh, I don't know like, if it's in KD. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a flavor of Ubuntu that I'm using. Okay. But in like in gnome doc desktops it was like prevalent mm. so good uh, one thing okay so the product is not available the product information is not available mm -hmm. so we'll go in the product see what's like happening over there so it should give us uh, some text like with this yeah so like a product name and description sort of a thing right cool so yeah uh, so i guess yeah so they don't have the color right mm -hmm. that's okay so we'll set up the color as white for now mm. okay you can also use like white alpha 100 for trans transparency mm -hmm. so dot uh, whatever it is that is just a transparent color yeah so like this primary has so mm. primary 500 will be like medium level primary 900 would be like mm. really dark primary mm. 100 would be like really light okay cool and over here uh, in i'll set it up as blue only and not suggested but sometimes when things don't work yeah you first make it work and then uh, go backward and dress uh, uh, you know, cool. soft. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. This is, this is how the basic UI will look. Hmm. Uh, and in if you want to like, uh, look at in a phone, we can use inspect over here. Choose a device. My favorite is Google Pixel 2. Oh, I'm a Google user myself. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. 
uh my for, like uh first phone that i actually like used a lot mm. was google pixel the first one yeah even i used that uh, this thing then i then i shifted to <laughs> google pixel 3 and i'm still using 3 <laughs> yeah it still works fine <laughs> the stock android experience in google phones is like really nice yeah cool so yeah so on phone it is like look working fine one mm. thing i also like to do is Mm. uh i guess we can do that uh, show device frame mm. so it may work for some phones may not work for for some phones so, okay so let's take moto g4 okay mm. so on moto g4 it is it will look something like this mm. device frame is something that it should have been added for more mm-hmm. phones but it is it's added only for few right now. Okay. yeah cool so we'll take moto g4 for now Mm-hmm. Cool. So it will look something like this. Now, when the person wants to like buy, you can mm-hmm. click buy now or add to cart, and we'll also add a component for quantity adding. So mm-hmm. after yeah. they they have pressed this, then mm-hmm. they can choose the quantity. Got so it. Let's make that. Mm-hmm. I get confused which is my uh, code editor. I have two code editors right now. <laughs> yeah, for me it is uh, with browsers. So yeah. I have a Chrome browser. Uh, now Microsoft Edge came out with one, so I'm using that also. And then uh, CC Cleaner has another browser. So all of these browsers help me log in through one of my Gmail accounts, uh, and so. <laughs> I have yeah. three pers- personas on each of these browsers. Yeah. <laughs> For me, like same, like uh, Chrome is like my wife, and my- Firefox is my mistress. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Firefox if you want to do some hacking stuff. <laughs> yeah, Firefox is like really nice, and it, the fact that is is open source is like mm. that's where our heart is. Yeah. Open source love, Arush. Open source love. Yeah. You should connect with this person, uh, Philip. Um, so he, he he's on LinkedIn. You can looking up there. Um, so he's an open source uh, uh, candidate himself. He posts a lot on, primarily on the ML and AI side, all the advancements. Right. Mm-hmm. Good guy to connect to in terms of uh, open source. For the ML and AI part, uh, I actually have like I have to stu- have have to study a lot in tenth. After tenth, I have never picked up maths. <laughs> so, so for me, like AI and all, it can get boring. Like for me, yeah. at least. I, uh, no, that's okay. Each one, each one has their own journey. Yeah. Okay, so we can use a font or some one mm-hmm. uh, called F A plus, I guess. Yeah. So plus plus this. Okay, so uh, one more thing, like small thing that I forgot to mention, mm-hmm. is like in React, uh, whenever we are building anything, mm-hmm. so at, at the end, the in one component, only one thing can be passed. Mm-hmm. So. We cannot add uh, H1 over here like mm. we did in uh, HTML, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if we do that, then it will break. Okay. React is like only responsible for one div or one element that we okay. will be passing. Okay. I... Have you used them? No. And some people have like suggested like to use them for to me. For the, me, like uh, ed- if, ed- uh, editor, uh, the uh, I I stick to PyCharm because uh, PyCharm yeah, sort of yeah. uh, gives us everything in in within it. So PyCharm not, was was my first code editor mm-hmm. after I did. <laughs> so uh, no, I don't know if anyone actually uses I did. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've seen a lot of people moving into Atom. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I'd still check out the platform myself. The 
atom plug have you tried atom yeah uh, i have tried it's not that but, but uh, the plugin support that we get on vs code hmm. is not comparable comparable to any other i guess uh, this hmm. uh, okay. that that makes uh, sense i was wondering why vs code uh, is used but yeah i mean for, so we are we are not uh, we, data science is not typically uh, like we don't use a lot of development components right so uh, that's why we don't venture into that pycharm serves most of the needs but yeah it makes sense that uh, the the plugins the better the plugins the the better the usage for the programmers and now we have huge plus and minus buttons <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we need to make the background transparent. I guess so. Okay, one more trick uh, that I use uh, in mm. VS Code at least: uh, sp like space or uh, like press Alt, mm. uh, continue pressing it, and then do something like this. So mm. whatever you do, you can do it in multiple lines. Oh, nice! So, yeah, this is one trick that saves a lot of time for me. So uh, what I need to do is PG uh, go to transparent. Yeah, cool. And uh, color equal to white. Yeah, that is over there only. And it uh, adds it for both the uh, things, like when you are coding. Yeah. yeah. Also, like I am trying to switch to TypeScript. Mm -hmm. That's even better. Okay. So, okay, I actually did it for wrong. So I messed up this part and mm. just, just try to cut it. Yeah, no problem. And so we have to make this background uh, transparent. And so the plus and minus, we make it transparent. Okay. Okay, so uh, who's this guy now, man? <laughs> Every time it gets a random thing. Yeah, I like this. Keeps things interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Element of surprise. Yes. This is a good uh, place for marketing, no? Yeah, it, it yeah. is. So instead of placeholders. Uh, okay, I guess this camera was. A a Amazon can just. Uh, Create an API of products, and uh, yeah. So there is one API. It's called Fake Store API. It's not by Amazon, uh -huh. but like it's like widely used for like lorem ipsum stuff. Oh, nice. So there are like portals such as this uh, which provide fake fake stuff, like yeah, um, yeah. Like there are many sales data. And what are those things? Like I'll take some from you and I'll mention that in the comment section. Because I, I look for creating some fake data. Like, for example, let's say I want to create a fake store uh, and uh, make some fake purchases and fake customers like that, right? Uh, mm. That will help me sort of uh, uh, give a perspective of how data is generated and how we can then use that to perform an analytics, right? So uh, wh where do you get all of these uh, fake data for, uh, you know, websites? Well, there's one place called Rapid API. Mm -hmm. So you can just go over there and like look for free like APIs that you can use. Okay. So one of the APIs that I use the most is Twilio API. So that's used for messaging people. Mm. It sends a SMS. So you okay. can use it for SMS OTP authentication. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. But I don't think OTPs are actually that safe. Mm, yeah biometric safety should be like forced onto all systems <laughs> okay, okay so the color is it's 
someone came. Okay, you, trans- okay. you want to go get that? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, my mom can't like, go. I never go on the door. Okay. Never. <laughs> It's out of the rule book. <laughs> Okay, so you make the transparent and so with this, uh, like if we if we um, integrate like payment gateways and all that, have you have you integrated payment gateways and all of that? Also, it's easier to do it with uh, with React JS. so it's uh, both right uh, so it it is not like oh, completely on the app mm. there will be some back end stuff that you need to like do like some caching or some sessions and stuff mm-hmm. for that i have uh, tried the strapi but mm-hmm. uh, for indian developers i won't like prefer strapi because no one uses strapi payment gateway in india right okay okay I think so. Razor Pay and all of that is there, but yeah, Razor know. Pay, Razor Pay API is there. Mm-hmm. I have not find any good con- like a resource to learn the Razor Pay API or how to implement it. Okay. This is like too much level of security needed for that. Oh, okay. Shopify has done everything then. <laughs> yeah, Shopify is like really nice. I also I'm uh, like want to like develop something similar to Shopify mm-hmm. that we can like talk about some some day else. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. So now we have this. We have the plus minus, but the minus now is like too small, right? Okay. So what can we do? We can push it oh, like down, I guess, or like. Make it excess is the smallest I can go right. Yeah. Mm. It's far better than uh, I mean this excess. Uh, I'm looking at this at first time, so for me things are a little bit amazing because <laughs> when I used to do, I used to use numbers <laughs> to get uh, get to these things. But uh, with this, uh, at least it's easier to. Uh, Yeah, it yeah. is like, especially for like projects for hackathons, right? Mm-hmm. So the we need to do something in twenty four hours, mm-hmm. and you and need a complete product by so, then. So, so in these hackathons, um, how how uh, what are the common pl- places that you do hackathons? So all uh, like now, all, so when I started, it's all all hackathons are online right now. Mm-hmm. So there's a place called Dev Post. Mm-hmm. you can find many hackathons so there was one teams ka hackathons going on mm-hmm. so they wanted to make uh, widgets or like apps for the team mm-hmm. in microsoft teams mm-hmm. they were they were like huge prices for that okay. 20000 10000 $10, got it okay Okay, so basically, in in Rapid API, then uh, we could get some uh, basically some dummy data, fake data sort of a things also, right? Like APIs. yeah, we can get like make there or uh, like really lo- a lot of. And if you like guys actually want like some uh, custom uh, fake API, like do let me know. I'll mm-hmm. make one. It's okay. like I'll just. Put 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 like push it on Heroku for I have some free that credit. Dyn- dinos, yeah, dinos or dinos, whatever they call it. Yeah, uh, how did you Size. get some free credits there? 
on so, uh, Heroku. Some like uh, open source com- co- competition I gave or open source contribution I gave. gave. Mm-hmm. So these people give like swags and all. So I have like digital ocean hundred dollar credit from Hacktoberfest. Oh, super. Mm-hmm. Super. And like Amazon is like really pushing the startups really well. Like the mm-hmm. uh, startups pack for like hosting. So mm-hmm. if you put, uh, if you are using AWS for your services, mm-hmm. so what you can do is uh, you can like t- uh, host it for really cheap for like if they give you hundred thousand dollars around around mm-hmm. that figure. Okay. Of the credit, I guess it's not size; it's font size. Got it. Okay. I also don't have like that much experience with Chakra, but like. Mm-hmm. whatever i have it's like really useful for the mm. things we are doing for making it. it even better what we can do is we can make it forward in the row for now mm. Mm. after mm. that we can like check the css and all so Got it. this products product 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 mm. for Okay, so now yeah, cool. So it looks a bit, little bit better. Got it. And uh, one thing we need to like add a little bit of padding. So the navbar is like in a fixed position, right? So mm-hmm. we need to adjust that in the products. So what I did previously was fifteen vh. Now mm-hmm. I guess we need to increase it like to the kind of thirty five. Should do though. Yeah. Okay. More, more. By now, okay, and the card button looks good. It's just that plus or minus alignment, right? Yeah. Well, the, yeah. So alignment is like really easy. Okay. Wait, mm-hmm. wait, wait. Mm-hmm. I'll show it. Uh, in in flex, flex, flex. Yes. This is the flex that we are using for mm-hmm. the quantity. So justify mm-hmm. equal to center and align. Equal to center. Ah, super cool. So after yeah, cool. So it mm-hmm. automatically did that for us. Super cool. So no need to touch CSS. Some people like do not prefer this. Mm-hmm. Some say like some like who like writing SCSS or CSS. They Got say you know, we should not do inline styling in JavaScript. It is not manageable. Mm-hmm. It will not be manageable if you have thousands components. But mm-hmm. if you're at least hundred hundred fifty components, also it's mm-hmm. manageable. It's quite Got manageable. Good. So there, there we go. Finally, so at cool. least uh, we are able to have the home button, the cart button, and uh, buy now for each product along with quantity plus or minus. We can also name. add yeah. a, a marketing one. So, like Amazon has a slider, right? Yeah. Uh, in the store, mm-hmm. uh, I have never made a slider. So let's do it live on stream. <laughs> yes, let's see how we can make a slider. So go on Chakra. Chakra UI has the best document, like the uh, best looking documentation I've ever seen, mm-hmm. at least. So you go on Chakra. Sorry, my internet speed is a little bit slow. Like when I'm like. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Still, don't worry. No, on my sorry. on my on my good days, also sometimes it it just fails me. <laughs> yeah. I have to change my speed. I have taken hundred Mbps plan. This mm. person gives me sixty Mbps in the Ethernet cable. Hmm. And when Wi-Fi is connected, it gets only fifty twenty. Wow! <laughs> so we can see huge. Uh, If only yeah. Amazon did something for uh, giving startups some good Wi-Fi speed also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I guess they have something called slider. So they have like multiple things. So if you want to make a form, but mm-hmm. you don't want to like style it, you can mm-hmm. just. Use this documentation so mm. so, mm-hmm. so easily you can do that. Got you can it. also do that with Formic. So Formic is another library. 
Mm-hmm. But like, why to like push more liabilities over? Got so it. it will make things like if you have so many libraries for different things. Like, so there's a library called uh, Video JS. So mm-hmm. it's for making custom players on mm-hmm. the, yeah. Also, uh, like uh, apart from this, like uh, like two D websites, I am also like interested in learning about the three D like. how uh, 3d websites are being made mm. so in the end we can like take a look at what 3d web is 3 what 3 js is doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, i guess they have okay so overlay drawer menu pop over disclosure tabs navigation breadcrumb media and icons they have a lot of th- 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 like things already done mm. they don't have a slider Yeah. They have that app. Yeah, the, the, the slider is uh, just a little below. Oh. Mm. Ah, no, no, above, 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 above. Sorry. I just saw it. Some. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh, and this this one is this slider. Mm-hmm. Um. For now, we'll just make one component. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me add this. Uh, so in the it is in the home component, right? Yeah. So as it is just one slider, I am just quoting it over here. But if you are like making it with multiple sliders, then you should make it as a component and in the component file, and then do that. Got it. Uh, cool. So what we can do is so, uh, another. Other other image, I guess. Okay. Image or box. Cool. Flex. Uh, that has an image. It did not automatically import. Sometimes it does not. Okay. on this src we can take another random yeah uh, the code is not visible there oh oh, oh. wait uh two monitor problem man yeah. um, take it over take it over and uh, go home And I will add it somewhere, basically over here. So what we can do is add a tab also, mm-hmm. because so we need to just wrap it up. Uh, so good. not a fan of divs after uh, chakra, but sometimes they are useful. Okay, legs. Then image. And this is going to take another random image, so you will see only this man over everywhere. <laughs> so from I guess it was product. And if we don't add an alt, it starts giving us warning. So we'll just add blank alt. Okay. Why is it giving warning again? Because we have not imported. Okay, and now everything is white. Mm-hmm. What happened? Let's try, let's go full screen. Okay. 
so it should be which should be 100% uh height should be a, how much height you want mm, 30 h vh is how defined so it's on the viewport so um, in the size of the screen it is okay. not in percentage but we cannot use percentage in if uh, we, we cannot use vw over here mm -hmm. because if we do then there is some problem with the scroll bar i have encountered that problem sometimes mm -hmm. so what it will do it will give you horizontal scrolling mm -hmm. even if you don't want got it okay Okay, so, so that, now we have that, some image. Yeah, and then so we make it also hundred percent width. So hundred percent width. We can just copy paste this image from over here. Hmm. We just put height as hundred percent. Always is home dot six. Next is yeah something like this. Mm. So some background image. Um, it's not it will be eight percent. Okay, so everything's working fine. I guess the pro, um, yeah. So the thing is with uh, the uh, the, the nav bar. Nav bar is hiding most of it. So no, we, fair enough. I think so. This is till now. This is good enough. Uh, I think so. We got a flavor of uh, how to use um, you know your uh, React plus Chakra yeah. to quickly. Set up a e-commerce store front end. Mm. Um, you know, there is a lot of work, but at least now we we understand that. Uh, yeah, so like it, it's like good to have the basics. Mm. For me, it took like uh, about a week to like just figure out the React router down. Mm. When I was just starting with React. Okay. So, cool. so it it's a matter. So uh, and the only way to keep doing this is to continue making products. right so yeah. whatever you inspire whatever interests you find that interest and then continue making multiple versions remake 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 mm. till you find something that is like you you have your uh, this thing so what are the places that you typically go to to resolve issues and all of that so my favorite place is stack overflow or okay. like you can just google the issue and the mm. first link is usually stack overflow Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there mm -hmm. are many com Discord communities. So I just open up my Discord. Mm -hmm. So not even like Twinify and all, but mm -hmm. there are like specific com communities for mm -hmm. whatever that you need. So okay. for, uh, suppose I'm like working on some project that is using Discord API. So mm -hmm. they have uh, their official Discord API server. Mm -hmm. So and they have like multiple channels mm -hmm. where we can like have like the special need if someone mm -hmm. is needing. Help in Discord with PHP. Mm -hmm. They can go there. So there are. So if you click support. click one of them, can you go there? Cool. So over here, if I go on Closure Discord, some mm -hmm. something over there. So they they have a like query, right? So is it supporting voice or like is does Discord voice API work? Mm -hmm. So the mods over here can like help them out. okay and what in your in your uh, this thing in your experience uh, what type of folks are typically on discard like those are super geeky ones or you know a new influx of people coming in also in my opinion uh, mm. it varies from servers to servers so mm. if you are on a server that has some indian origin right mm. so then they'll start talking in hindi and like uh, it's like a problem for like people from south or like from northeast Mm. Right, but then they sometimes, mm. yeah, sometimes they don't care. Mm. Uh, so, so what they do is like it's all they see. So in Hindi they are explaining. And to be honest, 
hmm. explanation in the native language is like far better than explanation in second language correct okay and like when you are going on like professional servers like next js so next js is a react framework hmm. so it does a lot of things a lot of features like server side rendering for us for free mm-hmm. so server side rendering is like used for improving seo so mm-hmm. what is what happens in uh, like apps like this mm-hmm. is uh, suppose you have some text okay mm-hmm. but the react takes some time to uh, like uh, render this mm-hmm. so what uh, next js would do it would like render the thing mm-hmm. and like um, a, like it will just give the index.html and all, uh, all. it okay. won't like uh, bundle and uh, bundle it in the client side mm-hmm. so okay. the web web crawlers on google mm-hmm. can like actually see your page and can help in seo got it got it so it's more seo friendly if you want to do seo friendly websites then that is the way to go yeah and now they have like also worked a lot on static site generation so like blogs and all mm-hmm. those are so good. awesome for static so, i choose gatsby mm-hmm. that's another tech i want to learn mm-hmm. i have like made a notion mm-hmm. so for whatever tech i want to learn so nice I, can can we look at the notion yeah cool so uh even i use a uh, notion to store every project that i have <laughs> yeah it's that's my starting point that's my guiding post also like notion is like the best like one of the best at least in mm. the user experience department because yeah. it's so simple to use yeah and that 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 a lot of programmers and coders can see it but i don't think so <laughs> uh, a lot of other people can say the same thing i like customization yeah. like i i like customization pages within pages and organizing like that right yeah yeah but those people who don't know how to organize or how to uh, do these stuff it's is going to be a nightmare for them they like the staring at a blank screen okay what do they do now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so okay so like this is the things that i have not started at least okay. uh, so these is nginx travis yeah ansible some devops stuff mm-hmm. that i want to do i want to like Open explore more on that and yeah. your seo in youtube dashboard what's that project yeah. so uh, that was a project i have to like uh, it's completed now so i'll just put it and complete it mm-hmm. i would l- I love to check out that because i run a youtube channel and so uh, it will be good to have my own uh, customized dashboard for me <laughs> yeah yeah sure we can like uh, develop more on that so okay. w- what i do for open source is like i o- contribute to one project for one month and ah. then uh, at least so for hmm. that i i get used to the tech stack so i can take the knowledge from this open source and shift to a, a open source with a better stack or like mm. a lot more technologies so mm-hmm. my learning curve like that does not stop got so, it so you be, you which is has a better stock uh, better uh, coding you take learn from that and then you go to something that has that needs yeah. improvement and go uh, go implement in that yeah and now like i want to like also i'm trying to learn test driven development using mm-hmm. jess and react test library so the yeah. like multiple tests integration testing and testing end to end testing and like so in end to end testing like uh, for front end uh, mm-hmm. there's like uh, this concept called like uh, it will take a snapshot mm-hmm. and it will match it with an- another snapshot after you have pushed some changes in the code super super so uh, it helps in open source projects so if there's a open source project so if there are like h- hundreds of pull requests every week mm-hmm. right so contributors the moderators of that project will mm. not be able to see mm. all these pull requests by themselves and like see if mm. it is not breaking the code so these tests like really help a lot in mm. like if uh, there someone does a bad pull request then they get mm. to know okay so this this is the part where mm. things are like wrong and then wrong. they can yeah check it and like make another pr super cool super cool so thanks uh, arush uh, for thanks. having that wonderful discussion and uh, giving your motivations be- behind coding 
and then uh, showing us a uh, walking through through react js and chakra and also uh, showing us uh, good platforms such as like the api marketplace uh, you know your your chakra ui website and also obviously giving us some vs code cool tricks along yeah. with showing your notion which is again a very very crucial aspect to how you put a sustained effort to doing things um which is otherwise not uh, given by anybody right like this is your self driven you yeah, so, you created created this program and you are doing it so thanks yeah. for sharing all of that uh, uh, arush uh, it was super uh, knowledgeable session and hope we'll do some other sessions uh, uh, hopefully uh, you know some apps and youtube or something like that and uh, yeah. explore but it was wonderful having you on uh, arush thank you so much shubhana It it was my pleasure for being on the show.